Welcome to this QuickBooks Online tutorial for beginners 2019 on how to write a check in QuickBooks Online. Okay, so at first glance, uh, this seems really, really simple, but there are a couple things you want to make sure that you do when you write a check in QuickBooks Online. So the first thing is, if this is for a bill and you have entered the bill in QuickBooks Online, you want to go through the pay bills process, okay, right here, instead of going straight to check. Generally, the only time, and there's, there's a couple little caveats here, but generally the only time you're going to go to just write a check in QuickBooks is, uh, one, if you are writing the check and you're going to, you know, either print it off right then and send it or give it to somebody, uh, and there's no bill in QuickBooks online, you're going to do that. Or if a check was handwritten, and given to somebody or mailed or whatever the case may be, you can go into QuickBooks and record that a check uh, was written so that you get it in your records. All right, so let's go through the basics here. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do, go to the Quick Create menu, you're gonna go up to Check, all right? And it's gonna bring up the check form. It's pretty straightforward. So you're going to choose the payee. So let's say this was Books by Bessie, and let's say that you had gone to Books by Bessie and you hand wrote a check. Okay, and so now you need to get it into QuickBooks Online to make sure that uh, that it's recorded. And you can, if you do use bank feeds, you can wait for the bank feed to come in to show that that check cleared. But in general, I don't like to wait for the bank feeds because I like to get a good accurate read on how much cash we have in our checking account and our bank account uh, ongoing. Okay, and that way when it comes into the bank feed, I can just match it. And it's not a surprise that, oh my gosh, I didn't know I had this outstanding check. Okay, so I like to go in and record these things uh, as they happen instead of waiting on the bank feed. All right, so the bank account, you're going to choose. In this case, it's going to be checking uh, the date. You're going to make sure the date is correct. All right, now over here is pretty important. So if this was a handwritten check, you're going to make sure this is not checked print later because print later means that you're going to print this out of QuickBooks and you're gonna put in the check number. So if this was check 5478 that you hand wrote, you're gonna type that in, all right? Now, down here, you're gonna make sure that you choose the right expense category. So if this was an expense, we're gonna say right now this was uh, this defaults, but you can choose what account this is for. Okay, we'll say this is office expenses. You can type in the description, and then you're going to put in the amount. So let's say this is $124.53. If this is billable to a customer, you can choose that it's billable. This means that you're going to bill this to a customer. This was an expense that you can bill to them. All right, and then you're going to choose the customer. Now, if it's not, then you say it's not billable, and you're not going to choose a customer. So if this is just overhead expenses, you don't check billable. If it is billable, check this, choose the customer, and then next time you go to invoice, this will show up as something you need to bill to this customer. All right, now if you need to add lines because you need to split this expense, okay, so if, if you needed to say some was office expenses and some was uh, computer repairs, all right, you can type in the other amount here. All right, that's called splitting a transaction, and it will total it up here, all right? Now, here's an important caveat to this. If you, if this is just a, an expense, you're going to put it under this category details. Now, if this is for some kind of inventory and you're purchasing this, you're going to make sure that you enter it down under item details. All right. So if, again, if this is just an expense, let's say we take this out of here and this is, uh, an, an item of inventory that we purchase. So let's say we purchased sprinkler heads and we purchased 25 of them. Uh, it's gonna be 1875 and that's gonna be the total. Now, why this is important is because this will now put this into your inventory uh, as opposed to just putting it as an expense. All right, very, very important detail there that you wanna make sure that you um, Make sure that you don't put inventory under expenses. Make sure you don't put expenses under items. Okay? Now, final detail I want to point out here is that you can check this print later, and it will say to print, or we can uncheck this. All right? Or you can go down here, and you can say print check, 
and you can go and it'll take you to the print screen. Of course, you can order check, you can make it a recurring. If you click more, you've got void. So if you're going to void this, all right, but those are the basics. And so writing the check and printing the check. So if I go to print later and then I hit save and close, okay, it's going to say check was saved and you can go up here uh, and say print checks. Okay. And it'll bring up the screen that says, okay, here's the checks. Now this is a sample file. So this is going through the setup of uh, aligning your printer with your checks. Okay. You may go through this as well. All right. So let me cancel this. All right. Okay. So it's very important to make sure that you understand the difference between paying for an expense or paying for inventory or whatever the case may be when you go in to write a check. And it's very important that you notice uh, that if there is a bill that you need to pay, go through the pay bills process instead of just writing a check. All right, so those are the basics. Any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave a comment below. Also, head over to the QuickBooks University. Uh, got, a, got an email uh, last night from somebody that said they paid for another course that was three times the cost uh, and didn't have nearly the amount of content or support to answer questions than the QuickBooks University has. So head on over there now, check it out, qbuniversity.org.